Have you seen Die Hard? Then let me ask you, who is this woman in the window? Why is she there? And what the hell is John McClane thinking when he sees her? Now stay with me as I give you the answer in this video. But first, let's play a game. What do the following movies have in common? For a moment there, you were thinking Ryan Reynolds, right? Well, each of these titles reflects the movie's inciting incident or major event. It sets the story in motion when it happens to the main character and we witness it with them as it becomes their main problem. Ryan Reynolds finds himself buried alive. Liam Neeson hears his daughter being taken by human traffickers and Kevin wakes up home alone and only he believes that that's not a problem. It's often a pretty intense moment, one that we'll all remember long after seeing the movie and it will almost certainly get a prominent place in the trailer. Now, all these movie titles or major events answer the question, why is this story happening at all? If this particular story element is the reason why the story happens in the first place, it is a critical part of the concept and therefore it should be part of the logline. Even if the inciting incident is no trailer material or your story is not high concept, I still want to know what it is. Look at this. An enigmatic physicist must risk destroying the world in order to save it by leading the development of the atomic bomb. This is a decent logline for the movie Oppenheimer, but the major event is missing. And even if the movie title doesn't have the major event in it, guess what? The first chapter title on the screen in the movie is exactly that, fission. All the action in the movie and in the real story of the Manhattan Project happens in the first place because the Germans discovered nuclear fission. So this is my template. When a major event happens, a main character must pursue the main action or apply to these movies. When he wakes up buried in a coffin underground, a contractor must geolocate himself before his cell phone's battery runs out. When he hears his daughter being kidnapped during a phone call, a former secret agent must hunt down the perpetrators and save her. When he wakes up home alone, a spoiled teenager must fend for himself against a duo of bumbling burglars. And when the Germans discover nuclear fission, a troubled American physicist must race against the clock to detonate an atom bomb. Let's stay with physics for a moment. and. Think about how the same principles that describe the gravitational interactions between atoms also govern the forces that hold a solar system together. Along the same lines, I've pointed out before that dramatic principles are also fractal in nature. Whatever applies to the big story works on smaller elements too, like scenes. If the inciting incident motivates the story's main action, I'd like to understand all your character's actions by knowing their trigger events. That's not asking too much, right? This brings us back to the woman in the window in Die Hard. I didn't understand this moment for a long time. It shows a woman in the only lit apartment opposite the Nakatomi Plaza Tower. And I couldn't for the life of me figure out why that shot was in there until it hit me that it serves to illustrate exactly when the idea pops into John McClane's mind to alert the outside world before he sees the fire alarm panel. You would think that you don't need to motivate mundane things like looking out of the window, reading the newspaper, jumping in a car, etc. But if too much of this stuff happens without a visible trigger, I might switch off because I don't feel emotionally involved. I call this unmotivated action. Now, if you keep your character's motivation a mystery on purpose, you may lose your reader or viewer for the next beat while they're trying to figure it out. And if they don't, after too many instances of this, they may run out of patience altogether. As Hitchcock said, give us the information so we know how to feel. And it's your job as a writer to make us feel a certain way. Film and television are not great for mind reading and voiceovers only go so far. Then, how do you fix this problem? Well, I've already said it. Describe the visible trigger event. Even if an idea originates in the character's mind, it's still best to create a visual trigger that brings the audience up to speed with the character so it doesn't seem like they're acting out of nowhere. Let's go back to that scene from Die Hard. The script reads, he looks up at the ceiling and sees a sprinkler head. His look drops to the wall and focuses on a small red fire alarm switch by the door. 
And from here, we cut immediately to the LA fire station. It's clear and effective visual writing, but it's interesting that we don't have the woman in the window. So either she was added to a later revision or director John McTiernan decided to add it. And even though I didn't understand the shot, it was working perfectly on an unconscious level as I only noticed it after seeing the film several times. Technically, John McClane could have come up with the idea to trigger the fire alarm directly without needing a visual clue, but that would have cut us out of the process and reduced our engagement with him. So as a rule, write a visual trigger to kickstart every action and visualize the character's motivation. In a way, this is the dramatic equivalent of Newton's third law, which says that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. In our case with drama, for every on-screen event, there is an action in response to that event. Because otherwise, it's a non-event. Let's move from Newton's third law to Mamet's third question. David Mamet boils down the essence of drama to three questions. Who wants what? What if they don't get it? And why now? If the first two deal with objective obstacle and stakes, the last deals with motivation. The why asks for the reason or event triggering the action and now asks why we tell the story of this particular time in the character's life. Because if there was a similar event earlier in the character's life, why aren't we witnessing that? Typically, for any experience, the first time it happens is the most meaningful and emotional. So, events motivate action. Actions reveal character. Therefore, events are the cause of character revelation. And this is the chain of drama. Now, whatever you call it, major event, inciting incident, or call to adventure, it is an integral part of your concept and story. You need to know what it is and the audience wants to feel it when it happens. In many movies, it's the hook that draws us in and it is always the reason why the story happens. Include the major event in your log lines and detail an event in the script for every meaningful action. Did this help you? Then click the like button and support us by subscribing with a super thanks donation or simply by watching and re-watching our best videos. In this way, I can afford to continue helping you all. Happy watching, happy writing. Cheers.